Um, so I, I asked who knows Wayland, but maybe I should ask who doesn't know Wayland, who like, doesn't have, who didn't hear the name. No, I heard it, but I don't exactly oh, remember. Oh, okay. So yeah, that, that's it. Just stop recording. Yes, recording. It's already recording for thirty minutes. Also. Yes. <laughs> so I think we, uh, yeah, I think an introduction is necessary. Um, so the second question is, who doesn't know what X or X or or X eleven is? Everyone knows. That makes things easier. Yeah. Okay, so I think I can start now. Uh, I didn't say that before because uh, most of the people will know me here. Yeah. Now I remember what Wayland is. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I like it that you came here without knowing. <laughs> um, I didn't say that before because most of the people know me anyway, but my name is Dorota uh, and this is going to be a good Wayland. <laughs> um, so, there, there is a short answer about Wayland. Wayland is oh oh wait, wait, wait I changed the this, the wrong one. Wayland is the future. Uh, Wayland is the future of display servers under Linux, and uh, we're probably not getting away with that without this future. Um, let's see why. Um, so this is the, the official text from uh, FreeDesktop.org. Uh, explaining what Wayland is. I will focus on the second sentence first. Wayland is a protocol for a compositor to talk to its clients as well as a C library implementation of that protocol. Uh, so it introduces a couple of words, compositor, clients, and the protocol. These are the three key words because they describe the relationship of things which are relevant in Wayland. And there's the first sentence. Wayland is intended as a simpler replacement for X, easier to develop and maintain. So we can get an idea that people got sick of X and want something different. And we will come back to that. But first, about the protocol. So we get an idea of client, compositor, and protocol. So it's all about Windows and how they are placed on your desktop. Well, not just Windows. There's also displays. We have a great uh, Example here where there are two displays and they might be running on Wayland. We don't know. Well, actually, we do know because this looks like a mic. Uh, anyway, um, Wayland is dealing with Windows uh, pointers. Here, there's, I'm pointing the pointer with my pointer. Uh, and how they talk to different things. And um, why? Do people, are not people happy with X? Uh, X turns out to be rather leaky and you cannot really contain it very well. It's also somewhat synchronous so that when an application, this happens all the time to me, when a remote application gets stuck at some particular point, the whole desktop becomes unresponsive and it's like, for example, the internet goes down at the time because it's remote. It's a really nasty time because you can't do anything. Uh, you can always switch to a virtual and kill everything now. Um, so the, the, but the main issue with uh, X was that it was not possible to sandbox it. If you could create a sandbox for your application, uh, I don't know, we could talk about the web browser, but web browser is, uh, doesn't have that much freedom with the operating system. If you could, Make a sandbox for um, for your application. You could still never assure that the application doesn't, for example, try to snoop on your key presses or doesn't try to watch your desktop. That was a big issue with X. I don't know the exact reasons, but it was deemed unfixable. Another thing, um, yeah. Um, so with with Wayland, you cannot do that. You cannot snoop on the input of other programs. You cannot generate input events that appear to come from the user. Yeah, that was another issue with it. Or you cannot capture all the input events to the exclusion of the user's application. So if, for example, you could not uh, spawn a new application, you, you, in X you could theoretically spawn uh, a fake desktop, take all the input events and generate some fake output and the user would never know because there's just no way to, to um, for that scenario to be presented to the user. Um, 
So yeah, this this uh, this is gone with Wayland. Uh, Wayland preserves the separation of all applications unless you deliberately deliberately break it. Uh, so Wayland, uh, well, you could break it if you design a new protocol which is fundamentally broken. So, so the, that's one of the main points of Wayland. Wayland is composed of little pieces which are contained in protocols and they are called interfaces. And these are some examples of interfaces that you can find in Wayland. Some of them are rather important, they are on the top, and some of them are, are less important, but I think I selected a representative sample of what a particular a compositor, in this case uh, Rootstan from the W Roots project, what kind of things Wayland is deals with. So first goes a seed. A seed is a user pretty much. A user can have a keyboard and they can have pointers and that that's rather important when we're dealing with applications and we want to control them. There's a shell which is a protocol for uh, the protocol for showing uh, windows to the user. And so unless you are supporting supporting shell, you are not going to have windows that you can move around on the desktop, and you are not going to have um, minimization, for example, uh, or or program icons, uh, I suppose. Uh, output manager. Without that, you are not going to have multiple displays. Tablet manager. You will not have graphical devices. Gamma control is for gamma control. Screenshots are also not straight, not 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 straightforward. They are straightforward, but they are not a given. You have to have a separate protocol, and so on and so on. So for everything that you want to do, you have to think about it, and you have to implement in your compositor and make sure that the applications also can make use of it. Um, so this case, this causes a bit of a mess when compositors cannot be counted on when you have uh, different features and different compositors. You can you have different support, or different protocols are supported in different clients. So this is, um, I don't know, I think it's kind of a cost of having a more um, safe system. Uh, some things are still missing. I think the video recording is still in, in progress, but well, let's see what happens in the future. Um, one thing that a lot of people uh, think that Wayland is Western. Western is not the same as Wayland. Western is a compositor and Wayland is a specification. So Western implements Wayland. It's one of the many uh, Wayland compositors, but this one is, uh, I think, the reference even uh, one. So people really think about it a lot. Um, yeah, and that's on the compositor, but on the compositor side, but on the application side, we also have, as I said before, the applications have to support Wayland and selected protocols. And we have that with GTK Plus 3 and Qt5. These are the versions of those libraries uh, that started support, supporting Wayland. Um, there are a couple of other libraries. I think SDL is one, and um, uh, EFL, I think. Yeah, but they are not not as big, so I decided to just mention them. On the compositor side, there are uh, actually have quite a lot of compositors. The three main ones uh, are in C. These are Western, Gnome Shell, which supports uh, Wayland since a couple of versions, and Sway, which was uh, made from the ground as a Wayland compositor. It's one of the tiling window manager. It used to be a tiling window manager, but now it's a Wayland compositor when talking about Wayland. And on the Rust side, there's Waycooler, there's Rustland, and there's Fireplace. Out of these three, or actually out of all of them that I could find, only Waycooler is developed, is actively developed, uh, which is kind of sad. Uh, but let's ask ourselves why do we even bother with using Rust for for Wayland for for Wayland compositors? Um, I'm just going to focus on compositors in the rest of the talk because uh, GTK and Qt are not that interesting to Rust uh, because there is a lot of resources in that and they are really language agnostic. So I don't need to focus on that, but I think focusing on 
on the compositor side is much more important. But why did I start bothering with it? So I'm working for Purism, which is a uh, company that's uh, putting the user's security and privacy first and foremost. And we are developing a new phone that's going to respect users in this way. And it turns out that we don't have a compositor for that. Uh, our decision was to use uh, Wayland, but unfortunately, uh, the compositors are just not there. We have started using one of the C compositors, but maybe we, since we have to, at some point we will have to adjust, uh, adjust this compositor to well, work well on constrained screens, and why not take that opportunity to start using Rust? So, what should, why should we use Rust uh, if we can get the important qualities of a compositor without it. Maybe we don't have to change many things, maybe we don't have to make the switch to Rust, but let's, let's see what Rust can offer us. The compositor, the compositor or a window manager should be reliable. That's first and foremost. You do not want your user to have the, the window manager crash and take all the applications with it. That's completely unacceptable. Um, the other thing is speed. That's because the user is is interacting with it, and uh, that kind of comes with smoothness. You do not w want to start recording videos and and see that it's that the frame rate dropped to 15 or, or or 10. It also has to be smooth to allow for quick interactions. You do not want to wait for your input. You have to you have to be a thin layer that doesn't introduce any overhead. This is uh, also important. Quick to build. We are, are shipping in uh, April, and we want this to get done while we have a lot of other projects to to care about. So, what does Rust give us? Rust gives us the type system, which is introducing reliability a lot, in my opinion. Uh, the speed comes from zero cost abstractions, which do not well, they, they, they introduce very little overhead compared to C, so we are, at most we are even, but we might be, uh, we might be losing a little bit, but that sh shouldn't be much of an issue. Uh, and when, when it comes to smoothness, um, I have to, to, to come back here and think about how applications interact uh, with the system. Applications usually, I don't know, for example, a video player is going to update its own window and it's going to throw some surfaces to draw and it's going to, I don't know, receive some input or something. But on the other, on the other side of the screen, you can have another application, which is a game, for example, uh, which is also trying to update the buffers or whatever, draw some things. But like when you, when you look at them, they are completely separate. And this makes it possible, hopefully, to... You know, have the compositor treat them separately, and with Rust support for concurrency, that could uh, give some possible way to parallelize those things so that they do not block each other, and that would improve, um, possibly that would improve some in interactivity. Uh, when it comes to quick, how quick to build it is, how easy to maintain it would be, uh, I like the uh, Rust standard libraries. As I said, in the, uh, the introduction, I really hate C because of the, its standard library, which pretty much doesn't exist. Uh, today, I discovered that there was a bug because a boolean is expected to be uh, four bytes big in some particular library, and those uh, bothering me for two days until someone else discovered the issue. So the standard library in, in Rust is so much better than perhaps this is enough of a reason to, to think that it's going to be easier to write a compositor in Rust. Um, so, what's the state of, of things if we actually want to go that way? Uh, there are a couple of libraries. It actually looks like a somewhat healthy ecosystem, but most of those uh, come from a single project, uh, which is called Smithy. I hope I pronounced it right. <laughs> um, there is a library on, on the left side of the of, of the slide. You can see uh, three entries which are related to the client side, and I will not talk that much about them. But I want to, to show that there is something there, and there are three, I think, like completely even independent uh, implementations for a uh, server side, as in compositor side, and gray. 
uh, stripe indicates what has been written in C, and the stuff on top is uh, is what has been written in Rust. And I skipped the sys crates uh, and just included the RS crates to make it simpler. So there's Wayland server on top of which Smithy is built. Wayland server is a basic uh, crate supporting um, or basic crate, yeah, it's a basic crate based on the basic Wayland library uh, to create servers. So the, top, the bottom library uh, that you can see here is straight from the Wayland project and really stands on its own. So it's, a, it's quite a low level wrapper over whatever minimum stuff you have to use to build Wayland things. And, on, and there's a compositor uh, framework which is called Smithy and Fireplace seems to be using that framework. Uh, going further, there are the, the, the twin projects WLC and WL Roots. And both of them are built on top of Wayland Server, actually. So they are kind of high-level implementations of several protocols uh, for Wayland, but they are written in C. And uh, the, rap the Rust wrappers are um, well, just, just that, uh, wrappers over high-level libraries. Out of those, WLC is supposedly much uh, higher level, um, and there are some compositors written on top of, of those. Um, yeah, so the only compositor I managed to, to run uh, is Wakehula. I think I haven't even managed to run it, but we'll come to that later. <laughs> so, so that's, that's uh, as you can see, that's kind of disappointing because all of those are building upon uh, C. What about Rust? Uh, if the news is not so good, apparently there is an issue with uh, MESA and OpenGL, meaning that you pretty much cannot write a uh, server implementation in Rust or in any other language that's not using official C libraries. Uh, that was that comes from a conversation from last year, uh, which kind of died out. So I don't know whether this is still the official uh, position of of uh, the library maintainers. But anyway, there was this uh, project Perception Skyline, which tried to prove it wrong, and this is kind of also uh, inactive right now. So I do not really have have high hopes for for this to change in the near future. So this is really disappointing because it means we are not getting pure uh, Rust uh, protocol implementations, even though the author said that it would be really easy and nice to write it in Rust. It's a very sad time. So demo time. Uh, let's see what this is all about. I have a demo prepared. Or I had a, a kind of an interactive version of a demo where we um, could write a couple of functions to make uh, the example compositor do things. Uh, one of those things, or maybe I should show you the, the compositor first. Um, the compositor is going to be based on WL roots RS. And let's let's do it. Let's build the examples. You can see that I had to mess with the parts. Okay. So I had to move mess a little bit with the parts because the library would not. Oh, what's going on? Oh, yeah, I was debugging something. XDG shell. XDG shell is uh, the name of the protocol which is allowing um, windows to be shown on the screen. And I need to find where I say this. Times. 
I'm just going to put this here. We have to find. So I, I left this um, somewhere and I forgot where, which is kind of disappointing. The compositor is basically a demo from WL Roots RS, and the only responsibility of that demo is to be able to show Windows. It needed some modifications because uh, GTK is requiring a protocol that was not there, but there was a one line change. So it's pretty much uh, the stock uh, configuration. I should have it. Somewhere, okay. So this is a compositor window. It's not going to look very well because uh, it doesn't have any scaling. I guess we could add some scaling if we really wanted to, but like, let's just show what it can do. It cannot do really much. And that's the first uh, surprising thing. Yeah. So when I open an application in there, it's, it's there. I can kind of click on it, but not really. The keyboard input works, but I cannot do much with it. Uh, I cannot, for example, move the window or I cannot hit the buttons because that stuff hasn't been implemented in this compositor and it's not a baseline. Um, so I was thinking that maybe one of, of the easy tasks that we could try to do here is to make the windows movable when clicking. It sounds like not a very difficult task and the compositor itself is rather uh, simple. It has 300 lines, so well, it is kind of simple but not too simple. Um, so there are three main important places. The first important uh, place is the state of the whole thing, which here uh, describes what kind of thing uh, the compositor is capable of handling. One of them is a cursor manager, the other one is a keyboard, Another one is uh, layout, which I think is output here. Uh, there is another cursor here, I don't know why. And there's shells, which is, in other words, windows. And the handle to the whole seat, which should contain cursor, keyboard, and, and the cursor manager. Um, so what we need to, to look at is the second place, which actually renders the shells as in windows. Well, the, protocol name is XBD shell and I don't really know why exactly this has to call Windows shells, but anyway. And this one is able to place Windows on the screen. Uh, it iterates over all the shells, it gives them widths and heights, it gives them positions, and then uh, it renders them on layer on outputs, which means streams. And this uh, render shells function gets called every frame, so every frame we have the possibility to drop things. And there is a macro 
and some weird syntax that you might have noticed. Uh, as far as you can tell, this is a special macro which is um, which is particular to WL roots RS, uh, which unpacks handles to objects and matches them to the object data. Uh, in in Wayland, every object that is being interacted with from the compositor uh, between the compositor and the client, every object is given a handle, and the hand only the handle is being passed around. So uh, whenever there is a call, the the call doesn't really send the object. The call can send only call um, some. Yeah, the communication doesn't really send the object. The call can uh, ask for the object to be created on the server side, and the server then starts start tracking its state. The call can change the object, or the call can update the object in some way, but in the end, it's the, the server which or the receiver which tracks the state. And on the other hand, the, 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 the one who created, who asks the object to be created also probably needs to keep some state of the object. So the object is just uh, that there, in reality, there is a handle which corresponds to two things: the object on one side and the object on the, the other side. So when we are looking at this, uh, the state actually stores handles, but we need to get to the objects themselves somehow. And this is the the border of Rust and C. The objects are C objects, and they need to the handle needs to be transformed into the C object, which is then wrapped in Rust and possible to operate from within Rust. So in the end, you do not have to remember uh, that much about it. It works rather transparently, and instead of thinking about handles, you just unpack the handle and, so, and forget about it. Um, so this is the, the, the second important thing, which is going to be useful for positioning windows. And the third important thing is that, let me find it. Uh, pointer added now, but closer. Structures, seat handler, close, um, cursor state, no, that's a structure. We need to look for implementations. Input manager? Oh, yes, there is a pointer added. X pointer, oh, yeah, there is a pointer handler. And the pointer handler just deals with events uh, that come on a pointer, event, uh, well, that, that come from the pointer. So the events from um, the, the events that comes from, from some input library comes here and gets passed on to the client. Um, uh, let's, let's take uh, one of those to see what exactly it is. The motion handler is taking an motion event, it's processing it, and then it takes the WR roots object and gives it a high level command. So yeah, there there is not much difficulty here. Uh, the button event handles whatever happens to the button. It handles the down event or the up event, and it passes that on to the client with a seed event. So this is rather simple. So what what we need to do uh, in order to to move a window, uh, if we want to stay simple, is just two things: uh, the button press to know whether when the cursor or when when the mouse button has been clicked, and the motion event. So if we want to start moving windows, we definitely want to know where they are. And currently, we do not have that. We have a shell state, but it only uh, considers the handle. So let's add two fields to the structure and make them according to the Wayland convention floats. X, oh wait, I did it here in the wrong order. So let's add two 
variables that are going to track the state of, of when it comes to the position. So when, once we have those two variables, we are going to start getting errors, and because I'm uh, too late to go through all the code by hand, I'm just going to let the compiler point it out to me. Uh, that's not the right command. Uh, that's also not the right command, but this is this. Uh, the shell state is missing x and y in line 108. So I will have to just update all the places where the state should be. And let's say that Windows start at x equals 0 and y equals 0. I think that's we could do something more elaborate, but that's going to be enough for now. Okay, so now we have some code, but we also want uh, this to be rendered in the right place. Well, this is still zero and zero. Let's make it a bit more complicated and plug the origin of of the render box where the window is going to place. Well, let's modify it. Um, so we have the shell, and we have the shell state. So let's take shell state dot x and dot y and let's see whether we got the types right. No. No, it's much better. So, what's missing is handling of the mouse events. Where was that again? Let's start handling the buttons. Um, so, first we need to have uh, a distinction between when the mouse pointer is just moving around and the, the distinction and, and and the state where the mouse pointer is moving things. Um, so let's find um, whether we have that. There should be a state of, on the mouse pointer, which is yeah, normal and moving. So when the pointer is held down, it's going to be treated as moving. Let's come back to that place and puts the pointer in the moving state whenever it clicks down on something. Um, I think I should start using button events because that's probably going to contain the information whether it's a down or up event. And this function is something I wrote before and it just finds uh, the when well, finds out whether the, a certain window has been clicked. So if no window has been clicked, then we don't have much to do. But if the window has been clicked, um, then let's put the pointer in the moving state, or what when the event is much. and what's here. Okay. So there is an event which is another W root structure. This is going to be fun because now we have to dig all the way down to see. Um, Maybe somewhere here. Oh, there is this input for button event state. Oh, great. So all I have to do is check state. Was that a call? If that was a call.
I, I hope that compiler will, will, will tell me which is necessary there. <laughs> So we are inside the generated crate, and I have a feeling that it's not going to be so easy to find out what possible values there are. Um, the annoying thing is that the documentation is not really online, but I tried to generate it, and I might have it without realizing it. Um, so the documentation should be in. Yeah, there is something in there. There is the documentation of the crates, and uh, hopefully I can find what I'm looking for. And we were looking for WLR button states. Where could that be? You just search type S, and then... Uh, what do you mean? If you type S, and you'll get to the search button, then you can do WLR. No way. Uh, go to and then Press and release, yes. Uh, that's a bit uh, much work, in my opinion, to just find the two possible states of a button, but I hope it's going to be worth it. Um, wait, that's, I need to fix it, right? Did we import it? Okay, so depending on the event state, we are going to do different things. So when the button is pressed, let's uh, let's just put this directly to the state. Um, and the shell is that, but we, what we need is a cursor. Yeah, okay. 
And so let's do. Um, so this thing is the cursor object, uh, but what we are really looking for is the cursor state. So that's directly here. Let's just create a new state. Um, Cursor. The handle is simply called cursor. Cursor becomes the same handle. It's probably not going to work as it is. And the state. Okay, so this is not quite right. I just realized that uh, we are turning, um, or maybe that's fine. So when we are moving the cursor around, uh, first we assume we make a check that we are over a window, and we, if we are over a window and we are pressing, then we are going to put uh, the cursor in the dragging mode, but if we release the button, we are going to be put in the normal mode. So the, the situation uh, that could go wrong is that we do not find the shell and we release the cursor, uh, but somehow that means that the cursor somehow left the shell while dragging it. So that's rather unlikely. So I, I hope we're not going to have to deal with it for this uh, example. Uh, so we got this, the cursor state and we need to have the general mutable state, which is fine. Uh, so what happens when we press it? I, I think nothing really happens. Uh, what uh, we need to do is just place it in the, sh in the state. State uh, cursor. Yeah, um, I wonder if that's going to work. Do you need uh, fat arrows instead of what? Fat arrows instead of column in the match. Again, ah, fat arrows, okay. Oh, no, in the, in the match. Oh, wait, that's not that. Okay, so that's in the cursor line. Yeah. Wait, which one? Uh, one below, after the cursor. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, so I expect that this is going to be a borrow issue. <laughs> and from unknown few, that's even nicer. I think I didn't do that. Person handle and person state. Okay. Went a bit too far. This is already the cursor state. And yep. I really hate that. So what's the issue here? The issue is with that probably. So this is kind of annoying because this macro is taking over the errors a little bit. And let's make it more nice. 
Shouldn't you remove the first definition of cursor because you are defining the, the cursor state? This one? Yes. Probably. Oh, no. So or you should do it later. I mean, that's what they. Um, is this I'm already changing it or you're not able to reuse it? Oh, so you are saying that I should scope this? This will is borrowing there. That means that after that you cannot yeah. uh, use it again. Uh, or I could clone it. But this let is not has no place here. Unexpected end of macro evocation. Uh, why did that happen? Yeah, that's kind of annoying. No, it doesn't complain now, does it? Okay, so this micro is kind of annoying sometimes because then you get an error like this and it's not the good statement. Huh? Expected statement. Yeah. Expected statement. So yeah, this micro is doing something. I think it wants this to be a statement. So when I do that, can you put the uh, let underscore equal to close block? Of this block? Yeah. Let's see how that works. Um, almost. Uh, I think it has trouble with blocks. So. If we do that, it might just work. Um, not the right bracket. No. Wait, uh, that's, I think that's better because now we have the same problem in a different place. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Um, I think it's expecting us to return something, and we are not returning anything. And um, this is, uh, yeah, that's better, but now we have our control flow completely destroyed. But let's, let's try to go through with it. Uh, cannot move out of world content. And this is something much nicer because now we have a simple issue. Uh, so let's make a copy of the cursor. Can, can you explain why you don't override state cover mode? Uh, why which? You could also just over in this case uh, override the mode field on okay. state cover. Yeah. Probably. It's kind of something that they didn't really think about. It's much better, but because of this, actually we don't need this. I think the issue is somewhere else. So let's bring it back and reinstate later if necessary. Oh no. If this will happen before? I don't know. Maybe we can try to remove What? Was slow is there? There is a oh um, state. So this is funny because that part worked before. State Oh, 
um, so let's, let's take a closer look at this issue. Okay, I think I, I understand the issue. So the macro is doing something funny with uh, those variables where uh, I think it puts everything below that inside some kind of a closure. So if, if this part is in the closure, then the borrow is going to be difficult, the borrow of the state outside of the closure. Or since that's at least my working hypothesis. And if that's an issue, then we can just put this part inside the macro, uh, inside the, the closure. The closure is to make the cursor variable resolve or something. So we can just put this inside the closure and somehow communicate the return value, which is, uh, I don't know, some kind of yes or no. But actually, it's going to be much e um, much more useful for this example if we return the actual shell handle. And we can return, this is a, just a simple function that compares uh, whether the shell is at this point on the screen. And I just realized that it does not contain the shell offset, so let's do that now. X is that yes. No, that's the opposite. That should be. Um, so yeah. So the shell uh, has an offset, and this is the offset. And this call checks whether the shell window contains a point on the, on the screen, which is X. So we should. Um, take the offset first. This is simple mathematics, but it's really annoying when there is a lot of people hoping to, that you get this right. <laughs> Life coding is always hard. Yeah. So then we have this offset. No, I think that's going to be right. Yeah, that should be fine. If not, we'll cover this. And let's return the actual handle of the shell. Can I even do that? If that is true and that just contains, returns the contained point, um, yeah, so let's not just return that, but place another condition here and return uh, result. It's called shell handle, I think. Or let's just return the whole shell state. It's going to be easier. The example of a thing that they want to do in the other function. Uh, it's kind of annoying because the, the handle cannot return immediately to, from the function. So I had to do the condition inside this, this macro and then return either true or false um, after the macro ends. So I will have to do that again, I think because I can't just simply do a return from the whole function here. Um, so if 
Can you do let r equals if? What? Can, does d handle return the, the last value? Yeah. And you can just do d handle and you get the last value out, right? You don't yeah. have to do anything. Yeah. So this or, is a, because that's a closure. Yeah. Uh, so I just cannot ex escape the parent function from a closure, so I have to resort to that kind of logic. Um, and I'm going to do some. But do you need to do that? You can just, yeah. in the handler, return true or false, like by calling shell jt contains one. Yeah, so if I do that, I'm going to get stuck inside the handle because that's uh, the macros to a. Uh, sure, but but shell state is from the outer scope. It's your uh, the iterator. I think it's borrowed somehow. All right, what, what do you mean to do? Do you mean? Uh, oh, you mean because of the add shell equals whatever? Yeah, so after add shell, this this becomes a closure. Uh, it cannot be closure. Yeah, that's it. So it's moved inside the closure, so I cannot really escape from here to here. I can only escape from here to here, and then I have to deal with it again. It's kind of annoying, but that's what we have with this library. And the other library is not so annoying because it's more rusty. This is just a high-level wrapper over WL roots, which is itself a high-level library, and uh, Smithy and other compositor is uh, a bit more uh, idiomatic rest, as far as you can tell. I didn't do as much work on that, but it seems nicer. Um, so I think that's going to be easier. Yeah, well, I can just do that. Uh, return some Uh, let's hope that works. Oh, there's much less errors than I expected. Uh, I've been coding in C for a while, so this is naturally and cannot apply there. Okay, that's expected very well. 242. And now, uh, oh, that's the same situation as we had before. We want to return the whole function, but we cannot do that because we are inside the closure and even inside the closure. But this one doesn't really matter because it ends with the rest. So we really need to escape from here. Um, so let's just return that. We are not inside a loop, so we can do that. Oh, should I do that? Or should I do something else? Okay, let's just do that. So I, I want to keep this variable data, so perhaps I should do that. Return nothing. Okay. Let's see whether that makes sense, even though I should probably use some match or something. No rules expected. We can do that. Okay. Yes, we got out of this. This was a journey. So now we are at the point where we have we know which shell we clicked and we know whether we clicked in or whether we clicked out, which is amazing. Uh, and so let's let's uh, I guess let's save this shell so that we know what we are moving later because we still have to handle this on motion event and if we do not know what we are moving then it doesn't really help us. Um, so for that purpose I am going to save the state, uh, I'm going to save 
the shell handle in the cursor state, which might not be such a good idea after more thinking, but I'm not here to think right now. Uh, oh, actually, let's let's do it in a different way. Let's just put the shell inside the enum. Yay, that's going to be so elegant. Shell of cursor mode. Where is my cursor mode? That's not a structure, that's an enum. And what did that say? No. Oh, that's Oh no, I did something wrong. Which shall stay this here or something? Something that I'm looking at now. Oh, yeah. Let's do a match. You can just move the match thing. What? Which match? Uh, yeah, match. So the state code and mode equals match. All of this into the uh, currently empty block. Yeah. All, all this in line? Oh, we want it's to true. move all this in here. Or the true, the true branch of the issue. Yeah. The true branch of uh, the issue? Uh, yeah, there. Yeah. To move it here, what? Oh, you, you, mean you want to do this in here? Yeah. I guess that will work. Um, well, that's kind of. Oh, that's kind of too much. Oh, that, that works. That works. I like it. And then if that's yeah, what happens with this? Let's oh, uh, where did we borrow it? We borrowed it here, did we? Oh. Where does it exactly comply? Yeah, I think it's. Uh, you did this because of that, so if you oh. make it back here, you'll get that. Okay, so let's. Just do it in the procedural way. I'm not going to do any borrows behind my back. That's how it's. No, no, that's fine. Oh, come on. Oh, right, I wanted to clone this. So that's just a handle, so cloning hopefully will not hurt me. But then we still have the other issue of where did I borrow this? I borrowed state with the cursor. Cursor world. It looks to me like this should not stay borrowed here. Yeah, but find shell is returning something that is inside of state, right? Oh. And so that's pulling a lifetime out of the scope to shell state. Yeah. 
doesn't have this problem if we have the measure that we turn the handle already instead of the uh, I so think that's clone handle. Yeah. Let's clone handle inside the handle. Do we find shell dot clone? Yeah. Should be yeah, yeah. Well, it, or, I have to change the return value. Oh, but I do not really need to change the return value. Uh, so what were we returning? No, not clone everything. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to write. No. It's still an option. Oh, it's still. But you can. You just put that in the map. Uh, okay. No, oh, we are actually do that in some runs. That'll be fine. So. Uh, in the work branch? In the sum branch of the match. Yeah. Uh, right. Just. Yeah. Um, in the sum branch of the match, let's do it. Uh, show state. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. Um, no fuel handle because I call it different I call it show. Yeah, that works. Ooh. And what they work for the compiles, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 I wrote a lot of So what what does it give us? It gives us uh, the shell handle inside the state, which is already not bad. And uh, it allows us to move on to the second function, which is actually dealing with positions of things. So here we have uh, the motion event, and we can find out the delta. So what we need to do is find the handle that is currently present, which is easy because that's uh, cursor and what did they name it? Uh, did I put it here? Yes, I put it somewhere. All right. So that's that's uh, mode. The handle is moving. Yeah, something like that. Where the handle lives. Now we have to take this handle resolve it to the actual window which is saved in the uh, shell state and then we have to change its position which sounds simple enough it's probably not going to be so simple as i'm saying but let's pretend that it will be so what we need to do is first uh, check whether this makes any sense if cursor mode uh, yeah Uh, cursor, I think we have the wrong cursor here. We should be looking at this cursor. I could have named that better. So this means that we are actually dealing with someone clicking and dragging the window, which is uh, already quite nice. Uh, so we have this state of the cursor, uh, but we, what we do not have is the state of of the windows, and I'm going to be lazy and just copy this. Yeah. Actually, we do not need to handle anything. Uh, what we have is the state, and uh, oh, so what we need to do is to compare the clone to the handle, and I do not know whether to compare the two handles, one of which is a clone, and see whether they are the same, and I'm not quite sure whether uh, they have a defined equality. Uh, so, yeah. Um, let's find it out. The handle of the shell is a actual state shell. equals to our handle which we have from the cursor movement. Um, 
then we do not really need to do anything. Well, we do not need to do uh, something, but we do not expect that this is going to happen to multiple windows. So when we have that, let's find uh, what we do need to do. We need to add an effects. And hopefully everything will, will work now magically. You need a couple of semicolons. Ah? You need a couple of semicolons because your D handle requires semicolons at the end of this. All right. Do we need that? Yes. Okay, then. So maybe, maybe the four loop too. Maybe. Just put them everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the same issue as with not putting them anywhere. Wait, what? Oh, that semicolons. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> uh, unexpected end of my friend. What the hell? People. This is, oh, well, well. No, you don't have return value at all. Can you remove the last one? I think that might be it, actually. Yes. So this macro is kind of annoying, finicky. Stop mode. Hmm? Stop mode somehow. Anyway, so um, probably. Okay, stay the first one. Yeah, you're right. You're thinking faster than uh, some reference. Yeah. So on one hand side we have a reference, on the other side we have a handle. Which, which one is which? This this is one of the notes that always confuses me because it, it reverses the order of things that they explain to me. Deref, deref. Yeah, deref something. Which one? Let's try direction. Well, no. So it does. That's not a reference. Wait, why? Oh, this should be a ref. Cannot immediately borrow the field that has an immutable bind. That's fair enough. You would want to need a mod and what? Uh, I'm mean, the other side of the uh, in statement. Of the in statement, yeah. yeah. Needs, uh, and also here. Now we have a borrow issue, but that's fine. Oh, so apparently the state here is outside of the closure, and here is also wait inside of the closure. What's what's the issue again? And I have an idea. Just do to dehandle the calls right after another. <laughs> yeah, before double the handle. Before what? Before we did the double dehandle. No, I don't. Well, like in, in line. Two, three, eight, just add another D handle. No, I, I I think it's it's just going to be fine. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I'm using the state. Uh, I'm sharing the state in, which is inside the closure and like also here. So I'm growing that, and I'm still referencing the big state from the inside. So if I clone the state, which is really not a very Oh no, it is a big a big issue because then I'm trying to modify the state and I want to modify the global state. So that's kind of annoying. And um, what do I do with this? Can't we do the same thing like in line two four seven? Nobody handle? Yeah, I, I think that's that's going to work because we only need the cursor between here and there. And what we are Actually, let's let's do it this this way. Let's put it here. Yeah. 
bump here. And does that help as much? With this return, it's kind of annoying. Let's try But you can break. Yeah. So I just break here. Um, that's just going to work anyway. You need the uh, gas system comes again. You need to remove the I don't need this one anymore. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> let's see where that goes. <laughs> um, that's a build I do not want to build. But there's a run somewhere again. Activities to show test and in another application and let me prove to everyone that I'm clicking things and I'm moving and nothing happens with it. So what what's the issue here? There's no um, unit test. There is no unit test. That's that's true. I'm probably um, failing the match. Oh, that's that's a lot of initialization. Uh, let's. I'm curious whether uh, this this events keep showing when I'm just doing things because that's incompatible with printer debugging. But no, they do not show anymore. So, um, well, I think printer debugging is where it's at. Um, so let let's make sure that we are capturing this part, and let's print out the state after every button event. Pressing the button and nothing happens, which is fine because uh, that change of state only happens when there is a window underneath. So let's pop up a window. There is a window, and now something should happen when we press. Well, it's happening. Let's bring it back here. There is. Wow, there's more information than I asked for. Interesting. Actually, that might be useful either. So we have a cursor mode, which is uh, becoming the moving or dragging mode when I press down, and then it becomes comes back to normal after I release, which is quite quite fine, but then we might have a reason to think that something is wrong when it comes to the actual movement. Uh, which, seeing that this is not a straightforward function, I would bet on that. So what, what do we want to, to check? Let's just print something whenever uh, anything is moving at all. I think that's going to be the right spot. Let's print the delta, for example. Mm. Where's the delta? Delta. Oh, there's two deltas actually. Yeah. Ah, just two. Thank you. 
That's one, step one. Step two is that window. Oh, step three is coming back to the console. Okay, press. What happened? Oh, I think that's the cursor blinking that's generating new events. So let's try moving. When I'm moving, nothing happens. How could that be? So yeah, when I'm, when I'm clicking, things happen, but when I'm moving, oh, no, when I'm moving, nothing happens, which is concerning to say the least. Uh, perhaps we are doing the absolute motion and we have no idea about it, which might be the case. So, that's going to be more annoying. Let's see what happens when I I don't remember whether a mouse is an absolute or a relative um, device. So I just bring the position. Oh, yeah, that's an absolute positioning device. All the work is in vain. Well, not really. So let's take that. Let's plant it in the same spot. And adjust just minimally to know what's going on. And so what what differences do we have now? We do not know what the position change was. So I don't have to remember the previous cursor position, which I would not really want to do. Or no, you're, you're setting the position absolutely, so you can just use the absolute position and it'll go to the top left frame. I'm setting the position after the move. Oh, yeah, actually that's not bad. That's not bad. So let's use uh, that's event, the absolute position of the event. And we do not need that here yet. Uh, so, delta x and delta y. Uh, let's just start with x. So, the cursor is going to have the position somewhere. And we already know. Oh, right. I, I mean, just do uh, shell state dot x equals absolute position dot x and shell state dot y equals absolute position dot y. So that the window at least move forever. Right? Yeah, okay, that would at least move. That sounds fair. It's not going to move very nicely, but that's at least something. So the yeah. The issue with that is that we are always going to be dragging the window by its corner or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think that's good enough. Or no. Yeah, oh. Where is the issue? Uh, we don't have it right. anymore. That was print on your print. Oh, I was doing the print. Okay. And no, no way. Nothing happens. How could that be? Well, I don't know how could that how that could be, but that means we have the most writing to it. Uh so shell states. I'll make a copy of that. So what I'm suspecting is that, well, well, let's just see whether it enters anywhere at all. Absolute motion works. Oh, 
So what we have here is the actual motion. Uh, maybe it's time to zero. The handle. Uh, yeah, the, the handle mismatch is one thing, but this uh, looking at the value that we have, that like I find it hard to believe that my pointer is at zero point six. So this must be in relative coordinates. No, it's in zero to one, I think. No. So it's one is what? Yeah, but it's not a window. Yeah. It, yeah, it looks like it's uh, oh, even one it, 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 for the size. Yeah, it's it's relative to the whole display. When I move the pointer outside, it goes above one. So what we need to do is look at the output now. And where do I get the output? The output should be somewhere in the stage again. This is getting really complicated, so I'm not going to do it properly, but I'm just going to use the first output that we find, which should be fine because there's only one output, and multiply by the, by its size. So there should be also output handler. Yeah. So now now I have the question of whether this, what kind of coordinates. In the general uh, thing should be. Not scale, it's fine, but that's not necessarily the way. Oh, my measure is here. Not there. Oh, yeah. Maybe we can find it. Can we just multiply by a fixed constant? Like, doesn't uh, really matter right now. Yeah, I guess. Should we so. be multiply by the size of the window? It should be somehow. If I cannot find this quickly, then that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I cannot see the size of the output, so let's, let's just multiply by a constant. My favorite thing to do. <laughs> 42. 42. So, what did it look like? It looks like kind of like 800. Yeah. 800. 600. 600. Yeah. the exact size, I, I swear. <laughs> we, we can check that. I have this fancy thing yes. enabled that I've never used. Going to tell me how big exactly my window is. It's just um, size. Size 900 by 600. Yay. Yeah. Close enough. So it's enough now. <laughs> no, that's 900. Uh, I guess we don't need it at the moment. So let's do it again. And what? No. That cannot be the same. Okay. Yeah, no, I actually like this feature. I do not want my numbers to be multiplied by the numbers of wrong side. Okay, so. And clicking wax, moving wax. Okay. <laughs> Oh, thanks to you. <laughs> yeah, so th this is the kind of thing that you have to do when you are implementing a window manager, <laughs> which, as you have seen, it is fun, especially when you are dealing with some uh, library which was originally written for C. So yeah, um, in the end, you can probably work through that if you really want to. So this is not really a daunting task that much, but yeah. I'm going to spare you from another demonstration, seeing how this one was really much longer than it looked like to, it would be. But there is this second library which is more rust than this one, which is called Smithy. And if you want to try with your new awesome uh, ways to manage Windows, that's where you should probably start. And I'm going to start doing that from my private experimentations. Yeah, so that's what I had to show you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
This composer now is not running kind of actively, it's translating the composer instruction to X to be able to yeah. sure. renderize that uh, in a way. This is the X, so it means that the composer itself yeah. is nested in a X window. So, yeah, it's, it's a nested composer, and most of the com uh, compositors that they've seen uh, which are doing Wayland, they support nested operations, so that should be fine. I think not, they have like three different modes of operation, KMS, X, and I don't know, frame buffer or something. So it's it's really basically all they care about is to have something to draw on and to receive events. So that's rather simple. Yeah, that's how I uh, do the compositor works on at work too. Next, next train to do is in 15 minutes or 75. It's so. an hour later. Next one. So okay. Yeah. I gotta go. Thanks for the Thanks for the talk. Bye. Bye. I have a question. Go on. Like, uh, you had this beautiful slide where you say, Wayland is a simpler thing than X. And I was wondering <laughs> how much of this is true, and also, if this will be true in 10 years. So, this is true and untrue, and depending on how you look at it. The, the protocol design is simpler, but because uh, because um, because it's uh, simpler. So the, the general design, as far as you can tell, is, is simpler. But first, you have to deal with the multiple protocols, which should, I don't know what the situation was on next. It also had some extensions, uh, as far as I can tell. Yes, but everything is an extension, and explicitly yeah. a message goes for a proxy, and then it goes for the proper extension to handle only one okay. minimal thing. And then it's go back to the proxy and back to the client. So when you want to do an operation, every time it's going back and forth with multiple elements. Of course, Wayland and say, okay, Yeah, so I guess that's, that's more than I knew. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's one uh, complaint that you could have about Wayland, that there's so many pro uh, pro different protocols that are not really compatible. But if we had that in X, then we are not really making things worse. But what I've seen people complain about uh, is that in order to make a client work, you need a uh, thousand lines of boilerplate, which is not the case with X. So I don't know if it comes from a simpler design, maybe it should be called lower level or something, but apparently, well, this is the decision that people made. So the, sim the simplest... Um, the simplest application that you can make uh, run on Wayland is really, really annoying because you have to set up a lot of things manually. You have to set up uh, the, the, the cursor pointer manually, which is kind of funny. You have to set up the, the GL context, the surfaces, before you can even start doing anything. I, I can show you that because I have it somewhere. Let's get rid of that again. Um, so I, I can't show that. Let's get rid of that as well. And there are a couple of examples in the WL Roots projects which are pretty bare bones because uh, they are just meant for testing. And one of these examples is not here, but it should be somewhere here. Oh, yeah. Somewhat slow. Examples and pointer. The pointer the example is called pointer, so it should be simple. So I'm going to move it on this screen. And let's see, that's 400 lines of code, and this is just the main function. So this is quite annoying that you have to do, like you have to deal with input notify, output notify, frame notify. Handle touch is a, well, okay, that's kind of reasonable, but there, there is a lot of things that you have to do. And what uh, my the most annoying thing to me is that you have to set up your surfaces yourself. But I don't see where it is near. Is it not there? Let's, let's check. So this is a pointer event, that's reasonable. Uh, that's touch event. 
tool events. I have oh, that's tablet. And yeah, I don't really see anywhere. Oh, right. A better example is going to be the shell example, and I have no idea where this is just now. But there should be a uh, top level creation tablet simple. Well, maybe a simple example would be. Oh, wait, there is a layer shell. Okay, let's open both of those. Uh, simple example is still 100 lines of code, but I like this one better because it's not that bad. But it, it doesn't seem like it's going to show any windows. But this is the actual example that actually does something, and this is uh, creating a panel, or basically a, a empty window. And I can also demonstrate that since we are. But it's C. Yeah, it's it's C. But like, you can get an idea of how much stuff is necessary just to get something running. And this is a simple example that just saw, shows a square. I, I can even demonstrate that because that's really quick. I have everything in order to show that. How do I? I said this quick, but today my computer doesn't seem to be quick at all. Yeah. The, the, this complication is because in, you're giving for every client more power, so you need this information from the client because it's not just the yeah. server designed everything, but every client has your sandboxing, so you're not getting any like, uh, people or that come from someone else. Generally, no. Exactly. And I definitely know that it's not because of sandboxing, because like while sandboxing is allowed, it's not a core part of the system. Mm -hmm. But when when it comes to like selecting a point, I mean so I, I that would have been easier to answer if I knew what how X was designed. But if you have to deal with everything uh, like setting up a a surface, setting up a window, setting up a pointer, setting up everything you want to go with it, setting up uh, binding to the keyboard, binding to the uh, pointer as well, and everything. You, you have to really do everything step by step, and once uh, like OpenGL stuff comes in, you have to um, touch some arcane interfaces. And, and that becomes annoying quickly. Um, Mm, I should have the example somewhere. Oh, yeah. So I should close that first. And this window is not working because I opened them in the wrong order and I ended up having two compositors at the same time. So. Yeah, so this is an example that I showed you, the one that contains like a thousand lines or so. Um, yeah. I showed it. I showed it to you somewhere, but I don't remember in which one. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. So that's that's the example that has 650 lines, and all it does is this. And no, wait, actually not all it does. Is this. It also changes color when I click. So this is. Quite annoying to have to have to write so much code to just have this much. Is the composer? Uh, I mean, the extra is when you start to start a root window, and everything that when you create a new window, you inherit everything from that. So that's more or less how it works. Um, and you can redefine stuff for your windows, but you have the root window. Yeah. Exactly. Is, but it's the same. So, I mean, so the, the composer has a root window. It there is no same, the, the concept of windows is not the same. Uh, Wayland is based on surfaces, which is basically, well, which is also not the same as buffers, but it's kind of similar. So there are three layers because before you can get here. First, you have to allocate a buffer, which is containing your pixel data, which is kind of a low level primitive, so it's fine. You have to have that. Then there's surface, which wraps the buffer and contains information like uh, the scaling factor and uh, I don't know what else. Uh, so then you have a surface. And when you, can, when you have a surface, you can use it for several different ways. And you can actually start using the surface inside protocols. Uh, one of those protocols is the protocol for uh, just displaying windows. The other protocol is the protocol for displaying uh, panels which is this one is using even though it's not a panel or uh, 
So you can plug it into different protocols, but the, win the resulting windows is just is not the same. One of the one type of the window is the shell that we played with earlier, and this type of the window is a layer shell, which is a completely different uh, thing. So there there is no uh, like a root window which you could derive from. You have to set things up uh, over and over again. There is a concept of subsurfaces which is uh, also not like the root window from your description. The surfaces uh, exist only to be able to set a, a, a different buffer with a different mode, for example, I don't know, instead of RGB, YUV or something like that, so that you can have separate areas within a, a, a single window. So that's useful for videos, for example. But it, it's just like that's the extent to which subsurfaces are useful. So you do not get all this inheritance, really. How much of that boiler code is really required? And how much do you think will it just be put into some library and you will never touch it again? When I don't know. <laughs> so this is something that I do not expect same people to ever do. I think that same people will just use GTK or QT or SDL or whatever they want and they will just forget about all that crap. So yeah, I, I don't really think that anyone will write that except for compositor authors or people writing those libraries. It's, it's actually much nicer this way because you can then take your favorite application and call the interesting protocols directly. So if you have a protocol for screenshots, you can call uh, the screenshot protocol from your application, like as kind of an alien call or something like that. So this is just one piece of Wayland inside your whole GTK application. And this is this is how the shell uh, that we are working on is actually operating. The shell is called FOSH, and like we have a private protocol which is only valid before between the ex um, um, between the shell and between our compositor, and it's like. Uh, carrying the names of the available windows so that the shell can display names of the windows and switch between the windows or something like that. So this is this is actually a nice thing that you do not have to dig into all of this. You can just use the parts that are interesting to you. I don't know the feasibility. Like I said before that you cannot have a fully native um, well implementation in Rust mm -hmm. because then when you have OpenGL uh, the C has to link somewhere. No. Uh, it would be possible to wrap C around to provide the, the, around uh, around Rust. Yeah. I don't know. Um, in general, I mean, I'm so, going so, to be very so, happy to try it. Because <laughs> normally, what happens is okay. There is a C library, and then you create a uh, wrap from no, Rust wrap uh, right. wrap behind it. But in this case, what you need is just the opposite way. You need to expose. A C library that has to be linked to some uh, Rust symbols. No idea, but that would be the. So there, there is a whole discussion on Reddit, and I can bring up the uh, name of the guy who um, started. Oh no, I thought of me. So yeah, there, there is a whole thread on Reddit that continues on the uh, on the Perceptia project. If you remember the name Perceptia, you should be able to find it. There is an issue which talks about that. And how they see different ways out of it, and like they saw a way out of it in terms of the client, but they didn't see a way out of it in the compositor. And like that, there was a couple of months worth of discussion with two separate issues where this thread moved, and like it just died out. I don't know what happened to it. Maybe people lost interest or something. But yeah, if if you try that, I'm going to be very happy because that's that's really important. Yeah, Nationality for that normally works the other way around. So you don't provide a C interface for what else to yeah. So, what, what they say that is that the structure is really deeply integrated, like the, the data that's being passed is deeply integrated into the whole C ecosystem, like it touches upon different and different structures. I don't know. Perhaps, perhaps it just carries too, many, too much data, too many pointers to make it feasible. Yeah, but it's more. Uh, in this case, how C works basically, you get the structure and then you go whatever you want. If you have then fully access to, to the memory, but in this case, if you have, um, and then obviously, then you cannot link 
the libraries cannot be linked dynamically linked to uh, static causes, uh, and so that's why C works in a completely different way to share libraries that uh, Rust doesn't provide. So that's, that's the way. Okay. No, perfect. So I have a word of encouragement from the discussion. It said uh, they, they they said that making a Wayland uh, base Wayland library in Rust implementation of the pl protocol in Rust is easier than wrapping around the C library. So maybe that's the push that's necessary. Yeah, but like since since uh, Wayland is not going anywhere and Fedora is using it already, uh, even as a default, I think, and, uh, and everything is moving to, towards that. Firefox is even moving towards that, even though it's not really supporting it. I I think there's no escaping. Like games are going to like closed source software in general is going to hold it up a bit because it's compatible only with X and obviously not with Wayland. It's going to stay there and sit there forever. But in general, everything in the in the open source area is moving towards Wayland, so there's there's no escaping. So yeah, that, that kind of a library would be really really useful. 